Warning. When doing this procedure, please do it in a well-ventilated area or in a fume hood and take the necessary precautions. Please only carbonize small amounts at a time. Hi, this is part one of two videos showing you how I make this high surface area graphene-like graphitic carbon from sugar. This carbon powder is so lightweight you could almost describe it as carbon soot. Hi, so welcome to the shed. Um, this is where I do most of my carbonizing and things that might fume, so which things aren't really suitable for doing um, in a house or a flat or whatever. Um, today I'm going to show you how to produce a fine sugar foam carbon that has a huge surface area. And it's based on um, something that Robert Murray Smith showed us in one of his videos. And I'll give a link to that uh, to that video um, in the description below. Um, but this is basically my own take on it. I've kind of tweaked it and added a couple of things because um, I've experimented around a lot with it and found out the best way of making it work. And um, I'm going to show you how I uh, make it and um, the the ingredients for that. If you actually look at the Robert Murray Smith uh, video, he shows you that you obviously need sugar and you also need uh, zinc nitrate in here. Zinc nitrate is, uh, I think a lot of us home experimenters have found it quite difficult to get hold of um, zinc nitrate. Um, it's not easily uh, attainable. Um, however, I have been able to get a couple of kilograms of uh, zinc nitrate on eBay, um, but I had to get it from Russia, of all places. Put in a small amount of potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate is easier to get hold of. Uh, I think it's uh, used as a fertilizer for gardeners and stuff like that. So it's easier to get hold of potassium nitrate. Um, I also uh, find that a small amount of fume silica actually helps the uh, performance of my supercapacitor within the sugar foam. As you can see it's just really 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 it's really light fluffy um, substance here hardly weighs anything. So in here we've got uh, the zinc, 20 grams of zinc nitrate and 20 grams of sugar. What we're going to do is add in the uh, potassium nitrate 5 grams of and uh, what I find this does is just give the, the sugar foaming, which is basically like sugar blowing really is another way of describing it. Um, this just gives it an extra kick, an extra blow to the sugar foam, which really helps the foaming and hopefully create more surface area in the carbon. Now this is an optional extra. I put in 0 0.3, 0 0.4 of a gram of fume silica and I initially thought that it adds a bit of structure and makes the carbon a little bit more porous. Uh, but it does seem to dissolve in the solution. So maybe it turns into a silicon nitrate, I'm not too sure. I put this on a heat plate at a low temperature and leave it to dissolve. Uh, I do add a bit, a little bit of water to help it along a bit. I probably added a bit too much uh, in this video. Uh, the more water you put in, the longer it takes to carbonize in the microwave. Now once you've got all that together and put together your own um, sugary syrupy solution, uh, we put a small amount of it, um, if you're doing the, the quantities of art that I'm doing, then you probably just want to put a small amount in at a time, probably about five or six goes. And what we do is uh, we put it in this thing. This is, in fact, you'll need two of these. I'll get the other one in a minute. These are... These were bought off eBay and they are basically, you put in the search ceramic um, crucible, um, you, you put into the eBay search thing. And these I think are made out of some sort of clay, probably fire clay and fume silica to do. This is the largest bowl that you can get incidentally um, of this uh, particular type, not too expensive, um, but you will need two of these. So you need one as a lid. So you put your small amount of syrup uh, in the bottom there uh, and then you put the lid on there. 
and what we do is we place that inside the microwave now we don't I um, recommend that you don't put it straight on top of the glass rotating platter inside your microwave because these get very very hot during the reaction um, and it will no doubt crack your um, rotating uh, glass plates so what you need to do is find something like um, a fire brick a soft fire fire brick I've got a couple of small bits here I've got three of these actually in the microwave and I just create just a little bit of a gap between this and the glass plate um, so that you make sure you don't crack it so we put that in the microwave and the reaction can happen uh, depending on how warm these are if you've done it a few times and these get quite warm then you can have the reaction kick off in about 30 uh, all done in about 30 seconds that's what's so miraculous about it the first time you do it it's probably going to be about up to two minutes um, and as soon as you, you start it starts to fume um, then you can um, uh, switch it off now it's important to keep a lid on it um, and to try to uh, stop the air getting to it otherwise what will happen is your sugar foam will oxidize um, and you'll just get uh, zinc oxide um, potassium oxide and no carbon so what you need to do is really make sure uh, that you put these on top of each other stop any air getting in and um, when you take it out of the microwave that you just allow it to cool uh, first before you take the lid off otherwise that could also cause it to oxidize um, we've also got um, my homemade fume hood that I'll show you in a little while it's a little bit Heath Robinson but it works so uh, we'll uh, now get on and show you all of that so after about 10 minutes also on a low heat on a hot plate uh, you'll get something like this I've actually put it on a little bit too hot actually um, sometimes it can just be um, just a clear solution but this has already started to caram caramelize or carbonize uh, the sugar um, and it's quite a clear solution might just be a little bit milky because of the fumed silica in there um, but that is now absolutely ready uh, to put in the microwave this is my um, Heath Robinson um, fume hood contraction here there's just a couple of uh, 10 litre containers that I've cut up and create an op uh, opening here for all the uh, fume to be collected in so it's like a fume collector really um, in here we've got a fan, electric fan here and what we have is like a, a carbon foam a sponge that you can get uh, in front of the fan to collect all of the um, particles uh, from the fuming and so it goes through the fan and out through this ducting here out to another fan outside that uh, helps to put all of the fumes and all the nasty gases out to the Top outside. Of this microwave I've actually drilled a few holes about five six mil thick holes in the top of the microwave uh, for those of you that might be a little bit worried that it's not the most safest thing to do because there's going to be microwave radiation coming out um, you really don't need to worry too much because the holes are too small um, but as an extra safety precaution I put in this uh, this mild steel a cylinder that you can put on top of this to help deflect and diffuse the um, microwaves uh, just to be absolutely certain if you're still not absolutely hunky dory and happy with that then you just stand back from the thing but basically um, the chances of getting any microwave radiation is extremely small now we've got the uh, extractor fan on the fume hood going on here hopefully it will take most of the fumes away um, it's a very good idea if you're in an enclosed place like this to have a, uh, a face mask on for you uh, to keep away and the fumes out particularly when you take it out of the microwave right so let's get cracking so what I'm going to do here is just put a small amount here you don't want to put too much in um, put in about that amount And just do this bit at a time and you'll be amazed how much that foams 
<coughs> so we're going to put the lid on top of that, make sure it marries up, stop any air from getting inside. We're going to put it on top of the little fire bricks here. Put it on there, we put it on high, let's say it's only a 700 watt and it will, it will fume in about less than uh, between about 30 seconds and a minute or so. So we're just going to put it on there. I'll put it on two there actually. It'll probably fume before that time. So just wait for that to carbonize. When you see the fuming starting to spell out of the door of the microwave, that is a good time to turn it off. Incidentally, the carbon sponge in front of the extractor fan in the fume hood is a carbon filter. Uh, let's speed this video up a bit so you're not having to wait so long. I've just noticed there's a, an old print tennis racket in the background. I do share this shed with other things, you know. Sometimes just as it's going to start to fume, um, you will hear a few kind of uh, funny noises and also the, the top bowl actually being lifted off slightly from the actual sugar blowing process. There we go, just made that noise I mentioned. Quite often the first one that you put in there, sometimes it's a little bit dilute so you don't get a huge amount of fuming but I think that's, that's fumed so we'll let that cool down for a little while and we'll take it out and have a look. It's when we open the door that we'll get a bit of fuming, okay? Put the gas mask on. The face mask on, not really a gas mask but you know what I mean. Just open the door bit by bit to allow the fumes to escape up the uh, up into the extractor fan. These are fire gloves, by the way. You can get these in red, I believe, if you're particularly fashion conscious. <laughs> we'll just allow that to cool down now. Once, if you're doing quite a lot of these um, in a short space of time, the more you do it, the more these will get hot. Uh, so you probably have to leave it a longer time for these. Uh, to cool down because if they're not cooled down enough quite often you'll find that it will start to oxidize when you start lifting the lid off so you have to make sure um, that you let this cool down uh, before you lift the lid off otherwise as I say you will lose your carbon and it will oxidize instead so we're just going to leave that to cool down for a bit longer and then we'll have a look at the foam so this is the big reveal then that tiny amount of liquid has turned into that that is quite an impressive amount of foaming I'm sure you agree uh, now what I do is uh, just grab a spoon and uh, put in bit by bit into a jam jar as you can see very lightweight fluffy carbon I just uh, shovel it in with a spoon just give it a stir just to break it up into a powder now I managed to get two jam jars full out of uh, that whole amount of syrup that I showed you and in the next video I show you how to wash out the metals and the uh, salts from it and graphitize the carbon in a kiln.